Hello friends, it's Kayla. I haven't done one of these videos in a while where I just tell you about all of the recent books that I've heard about and I think I want to read. Or rather, together we're going to decide if we want to read a lot of them because I haven't even read the synopsis, but I'm going to read it to you and to me. Um, first up though, I'm going to go through books that I've talked about in other episodes but now they have covers and we can investigate the cover together and decide if we like it. Let's kick it off with The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adiba Jagadar, which is one I talked to you about before. Um, it had a different title. I don't even remember what it is, but this is the author of Henny and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating and The Henna Wars and upcoming Much Anticipated by Me, that Titanic book. Um, this one is like a romance. I feel like her books always look more middle grade than YA and this one especially um, but it takes place in a baking competition which is very fun. Our main character's name is Shireen and her parents donut shop is called You Drive Me Glazy. <laughs> but then her ex-girlfriend is also a contestant and now they have to go up against each other. What would you rate the cover? I don't love the style but I love that we have some fat rep on the cover so that's exciting. Next up is Of Light and Shadow by Tanaz Batina, who's the author of A Girl Like That and one of my favorites, Beauty of the Moment, and Hunted by the Sky, which I haven't read yet. I like the cover enough. It's YA high fantasy, and we're following a character named Rashawn, abandoned by her parents at birth, adopted into a kingdom. She's now the leader of the Shadow Clan, a gang of farmers turned bandits, impoverished by the provincial governor's atrocities and corruption. I have read this before. And then we have Prince and Naveen, and I'm sure they're gonna be using each other for various goals but then also fall in love then we have you don't have a shot by Raquel Marie I was not expecting a cover reveal this soon because I just talked a couple months ago about how we're getting um, a book inspired by Bend It Like Beckham but that's not like in the synopsis or anything our main character is Vale her life revolves around soccer then she incites a fight during playoffs with her longtime rival Letitia so she runs away for the summer to her beloved soccer camp um, but her enemy is there and they're co-captaining a team. It's a rivals to lovers romance about rediscovering your love of the game and yourself. This is the author of Ophelia After All, which I gave five stars, I think. Next up is that Leah Johnson I talked about. She has written YA and then she's doing a middle grade one. And the cover's really cute. It says Ellie Angle saves the world, but it's crossed out. It says herself. There's an earthquake that hits her small town and she realizes she has the power to bring anything back to life with just her touch. Oh, but then a video of her using her powers go viral and she is thrust into the spotlight. Interesting. What do we think of the cover? I think it's cute. And then we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chakshi. And this is an adult fantasy. Yes a sumptuous gothic infused story about marriage that is unraveled by dark secrets, a friendship cursed to end in tragedy, the danger of believing in fairy tales. Once upon a time, a man who believed in fairy tales married a beautiful, mysterious woman. He was a scholar of myths, she the heiress to a fortune. But Indigo has many secrets from her past, and the bridegroom will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy even if doing so threatens to destroy their marriage. I just think that sounds stunning. I haven't read from this author before, but I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, then we got a cover reveal for Bright and Deadly Things. I feel like this was a while ago, but I don't think I've talked about it because I don't like the cover. I don't mean I didn't talk about it because I don't like the cover. I just, I remember not talking about it because I would have mentioned that I don't like the cover. Although I guess none of her covers have really ever super done it for me so it's fine like there's nothing wrong with it and it's set in the mountains so naturally i want to read it it says it's a remote back to basics mountaintop retreat in the french alps that turns deadly as an oxford fellow finds herself in the crosshairs of her late husband's dangerous secrets most of the ones i've talked about are out pretty early in 2023 including just the nicest couple by mary kubica I will always read a Mary Kubica. It says a husband's disappearance inextricably links inextricably links two couples in this twisty thriller. I know I've talked about this synopsis before, but it says two couples, two close friends, one missing husband. So there's a husband who's missing and everybody else there like knows maybe why or where he is or the secrets involved with why he's missing. It sounds pretty straightforward, but it says it's gonna deliver a high octane edge of your seat thrilling book filled with delicious lies and shocking betrayals. And then I don't follow a lot of romance releases, so I'm sure there's so many that I've never heard of, but two that are definitely on my radar are a new one from Talia Hibbert and Emily Henry. They're both pink and sound 
good. So the Talia Hibbert is called Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. I added it before I realized it was YA, but I'm sure that'll be exciting to a lot of people. This will be this author's first YA, I think. And I added it because we have a main character with OCD, so I'm interested in the OCD rep. And then we have another main character and they go on a survival course together in the woods. And it's like this competition where these rivals have to work together for a big grand prize and it's gonna bring them closer together. It just sounds so cute. And then the upcoming book called Happy Place by Emily Henry is about a fake dating relationship a favorite trope of mine. It says a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend they're still together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends. Now moving on to a whole bunch of books that I don't know what they're about so we'll find out together. We have a new Wendy Walker it's called What Remains and it says Detective Elise Sutton through her days of living in fear thought her days of living in fear were behind her. She survived her husband's infidelity and an early case that almost broke her forcing her to leave active duty for work solving cold cases alongside her loyal partner blah 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 blah. All that changes the day she enters a local mini mart and stumbles upon a robbery in progress. What remains is the meticulous plotting of the silent patient, the urgency of girl on the train, and the complex characters and emotional punch of Long Bright River. Okay that didn't give us a lot of information but I'm sure once the cover comes out we'll get more. Um, I have had mixed results with Wendy Walker but I think I'll probably pick that one up. Maybe as an experiment of reading detective POVs. Then a new Taylor Adams was announced. It's called The Last Word and this is the author of No Exit which I really enjoyed and it says after posting a negative book review a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very very dangerous in this pulse pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror. Doesn't that sound so fun? We're following a book reviewer and an author and deadly situations. Then I heard about this book called The Black House by Carol Johnstone who I have Mirrorland from on my TBR so I haven't read anything from her yet but I really like this cover so I added it even though I don't know what it's about. This book is set in an on an isolated Scottish island. It says Robert Reed moved his family to the Scottish town in the 1990s driven by hope, craving safety and community, and hiding a terrible secret. But despite his best efforts to fit in, Robert has always been seen as an outsider. There, are, I've read so many books recently with my husband. My husband's name is the main character's name, and I don't can't say that I like it. Then we have another character named Maggie, who has sensed something was wrong with her her entire life. When she was five years old, she announced that a man on Kilmaray, a place she'd never visited, had been murdered. Her unfounded claim drew media attention and turned the locals against her, creating rifts that never mended. Nearly 20 years later, Maggie's determined to find out what really happened and what the islanders are hiding. Oh, this is it came out in 2022 originally, and this new cover, maybe it's the North American one, is coming out in 2023. Let's move on. The next one, the cover very much reminds me of the Courtney Stevens from a couple years ago that was not good. Um, this one's called The House in the Pines by Anna Reyes. I think it's a debut. A captivating psychological suspense debut about a young woman still haunted by her childhood best friend's death who learns of an eerily similar incident and must find her way back to the cabin in the New England woods armed with only hazy memories. Okay so we've got a classic setup high school senior best friend got involved with this man. The current day her past comes back to haunt her when she discovers a YouTube video of a young woman who suddenly keels over in a diner sitting across from none other than that same man. With guidance from a half-written book by the father in Guatemala she never knew, Maya's quest for answers forces her to relive that fateful summer. Let me know if any of these you think would be good literally dead book club selections too because I'm starting to build the 2023 list. Moving on, I love this cover. It's called White Horse by Erica T. Worth and it says it's a gritty vibrant debut about an indigenous woman who must face her past when she discovers a bracelet haunted by her mother's spirit. So it's a horror book we have heavy metal, ripped jeans, Stephen King novels, and the occasional beer at the White Horse have defined urban Indian Carrie James's life so far. But when her cousin Debbie finds an old family bracelet, the one that belonged to Carrie's mother, it inadvertently calls up both her mother's ghost and a monstrous entity. And her willful ignorance about her past is no longer sustainable. Dun dun dun! Oh, this one actually comes out in 2022. Uh, next up, I quite like this cover too. Maybe just because it's a little bit different, like the bright, vibrant green. Uh, it's called The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. 
looks like a debut. Alex has all but given up her dreams on becoming a published author when she receives a once in a lifetime opportunity. Attend an exclusive month long writing retreat at the estate of feminist horror writer Rosa Vallo. Even the knowledge that Ren, her former best friend and current rival is attending doesn't dampen her excitement. But when the attendees arrive, Rosa drops a bombshell. They must all complete an entire novel from scratch during the next month. And the author of the best one will receive a life changing seven figure publishing deal. Okay, so it's like a uh, life or death NaNoWriMo. <laughs> Alex realizes something sinister is afoot. With the clock running out, she's desperate to discover the truth and save herself. It's claustrophobic, a propulsive thriller, unputdownable, all the buzzwords. I love books about books, so maybe I'll wait for some ARC reviews to roll in, but that does sound like something that intrigues me. Ooh, then I added a cozy mystery called Bored to Death by CJ Connor. This is a debut cozy queer mystery featuring a 30 something professor turned board game shop proprietor who juggles keeping his family salt lake city based board game shop alive a budding romance with the handsome florist next door and a murder that threatens the game shop's livelihood Ooh, i definitely want to read that i want to see the cover i hope it's good i'll share it with you when it gets revealed next up i added something called the survivalists by kushana Kali. And this comes out early 2023 it says a single black lawyer puts her career and personal moral code at risk when she moves in with her coffee entrepreneur boyfriend and his doomsday prepping roommates in a novel that's packed with tension curiosity humor and wit so this is just like general fiction it says for readers of the changeling the sellout the other black girl it's a darkly humorous novel it's unafraid to ask the questions most relevant to a new generation of americans does it make sense to climb the corporate ladder what exactly are the politics of gun ownership and in a world where it's nearly impossible for young people to earn enough money to afford stable housing what does it take in order to survive that feels like something that will be getting a lot of buzz next year oh i seem to have added another romance to my list with no cover it's called pining maybe that's why or maybe I added it because it's about winning the lottery. Maisie Edding's queer holiday rom-com features a down on her luck 20 something who wins the lottery and impulsively buys a tree farm to escape her ex. But instead of solitude, she finds a grumpy woman claiming she inherited the property, causing sparks to fly as they fight for the disastrously romantic farm. Fun. Then I added a book called She is Haunting by Trang Ton Tran. This says a house with a terrifying appetite haunts a broken family in this atmospheric horror perfect for fans of Mexican Gothic, which I wasn't, but that's okay. When Jade Nguyen arrives in Vietnam for the for a visit with her estranged father, she has one goal, survive five weeks pretending to be a happy family in the French colonial house. She's always lied to fit in, so if she's straight enough, Vietnamese enough, American enough, she can get out with the college money he promised, but the house has other plans. Night after night, Jade wakes up paralyzed. She finds curious traces of her ancestors in the gardens. She can't ignore the ghost of the beautiful bride who leaves her cryptic warnings. Don't eat. Oh my. I add so many of these books just to my on my radar shelf and then I look into them in these videos and then I move some of them swiftly over to my official want to read shelf. This I think is a debut and I really want to see the cover. I hope it's good. Next there's a new CJ Tudor. I'm obsessed with the cover and it has a very vague synopsis or blurb or whatever. It just says prepare for the big chill. A crashed coach full of students, a stranded cable car full of strangers, an isolated chalet full of friends. Outside a snowstorm rages. Inside one group a killer lurks. But which one? The drift, survival can be murder. I feel like after three years, maybe it would be fun to revisit the very first author we ever read for the book club. Um, we read the other people. I have also read The Chalk Man and I'm reading The Burning Girls very soon. This sounds like a locked room kind of mystery thriller and I definitely wanna read it. Let me know if you do. Then, I think this book came out quite a few years ago, but it's just getting translated to English. It's called Seven Empty Houses by Samantha Schweblin. And it says it's a short story collection that will make you feel like the house is collapsing in on you. Seven houses in these seven stories are empty. Some are devoid of love or life or furniture, of people or the truth or of memories. But something always creeps back in. A ghost, a fight, trespassers, a list of things to do before you die, a child's first encounter with a dark choice, 
or the fallibility of parents oh this actually comes out october 2022 actually i got a dm about this one asking if i wanted an arc perhaps i should say yes um i really like the cover of this one then i have deep as the sky red as the sea by rita chang epic and it just says her novel about the infamous pirate queen of the south china sea is coming in 2023 do i want to read things about pirates maybe i do maybe i need to see the cover another one the salt grows heavy oh this is by cassandra Kaw, um who wrote uh, nothing but black and teeth which i didn't love but i definitely am interested in picking up more from her and this says after murdering her husband and burning his kingdom to cinders a mermaid joins a strange doctor on a journey through the eerie taiga deep in the woods the pair stumble upon the village full of seemingly ageless children and the three surgeons who oversee them called only the saints after discovering the villagers taste for sinister blood sport the mermaid and her companion must embrace the darkest parts of their true nature if they hope to survive does it say how many pages? is this a novella is it a full length novel oh it's a novella okay i'm gonna pick it up mermaid novellas that's absolutely a thing that i like then another author i have read a short thing from before channa porter who wrote the seep has a new thing called the thick and the lean i hate the cover but i think like the seep you're supposed to, it's supposed to make you feel weird this says it's about an aspiring chef a cyber thief and a kitchen maid each breaking free from a society that wants to constrain them. We're in a quaint religious town called Seagate, where abstaining from food brings one closer to God. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of interesting commentary, I think, here. Uh, Beatrice Bolano is hungry. She craves the forbidden butter, flambe, marzipan. As Seagate takes increasingly extreme measures to regulate every calorie its citizens consume, Beatrice must make a choice, give up her secret passion for cooking or leave the only community she's known. And it's a startling fable about the perils of capitalism, body politics, and the stigmas women face for appetites of every kind. Interesting. Next on my list is called All Hollows by Christopher Golden. It says, with the 80s nostalgia of Stranger Things, hey stranger things uh this horror drama follows neighborhood families and a mysterious lurking evil on one halloween day fun it's 1984 and two families are unraveling up and down the street horrifying secrets are being revealed and amongst trick-or-treaters of all ages four children who do not belong are walking door to door merging with the kids of Parmenter Road. These odd children claim that the cunning man is coming for them and they want the local kids to protect them. But with families falling apart in the neighborhood splintered by bitterness, who will save the children of Parmenter Road? Then I have Bad Cree by Jessica Johns, which is a supernatural horror. A young Cree woman's dreams lead her on a perilous journey of self discovery that ultimately forces her to confront the toll of a legacy of violence on her family, her community, and the land they call home. When Mackenzie wakes up to severed crow heads on her hands, on her hands? When Mackenzie wakes up with severed crow's head, with a severed crow's head in her hands, she panics. Reading comprehension? Where? Only moments earlier, she had been fending off masses of birds in a snow-covered forest. In bed, when she blinks, the head disappears. Night after night, Mackenzie's dreams return her to a memory from before her sister Sabrina's untimely death. And then I have another V, I don't know why I said another. I read from V Castro earlier this year and they have another book coming out called The Haunting of Alejandra. The cover is wonderful. Face flowers are very much for me. A woman is haunted by the Mexican folk demon La Llorona. Is that how you pronounce that? As she unravels the dark secrets of her family history in this ravishing and provocative horror novel. How long is it? Okay, it's under 300 pages. Goddess of Filth was a pretty short novella and I really liked it. And I think I said I would want to read a full novel from her when I read that. Alejandra no longer knows who she is. To her husband, she's a wife and to her children, a mother. To her own adoptive mother, she is a daughter. But they cannot see who Alejandra has become, a woman struggling with a darkness that threatens to consume her. Ghostly visions appear to her as she goes deeper into her family line. She learns of heartbreak and tragedy of her ancestors. Then I added another tour horror called sister maiden monster by lucy a snyder do i like this cover i don't know it's weird but let's find out what it's about 
Set in the aftermath of our planet's disastrous transformation and told through the eyes of three women trying to survive the nightmare, a virus tears through the globe, transforming its victims in nightmarish ways. We have Erin, once quiet and closeted, acquires an appetite for a woman and her brain. Savannah, a professional BDSM switch, discovers a new turn on, committing brutal murders. Mariva, plagued with chronic tumors, is too horrified to acknowledge her divine role in the coming apocalypse. Oh, was inspired by a short cosmic story that she wrote and now has become a full length book. Okay, maybe I should read the short story, but maybe that would spoil Hmm, I'll think about it. Next up, I'm definitely on the hunt for some vampire stories. This one's called Blood Orange by Karina Halley. Hale. And it says, I think it said somewhere that it's a new adult paranormal vampire romance. And it says, once there was a man who fell deeply in love with a woman he could never have. When their affair was uncovered, she was brutally murdered in front of him and he discovered he was cursed, doomed to live forever as a vampire. Over the centuries, he found his love again and lost her again until he was so broken, he gave up on love entirely, sinking into the depths of depravity, losing his humanity. Then one day she came back into his life, a student of music studying under him at a conservatory in Venice, Italy, where he was a professor. But even though he found her beautiful and intriguing, he didn't recognize his fated mate at all. Devastating. Because this time she had to hide her true self. This time she came back as a witch whose destiny wasn't to love him, but to kill him. Oh my gosh, that comes out like next month. Wow. Okay, next I have this cover to be revealed, which is good because I just saw this and I didn't love it. It's called The Death I Gave Him by M.X. Lou is it a debut? I don't see anything else from them. It says Hayden Litchfield's breakthrough in his pursuit of immortality should be cause for celebration. Then he finds his father murdered and everyone thinks he did it. As he flees with their research, his uncle puts Elsinore's lab on lockdown and Hayden's only ally is the laboratory's AI, Horatio. Oh my gosh. We have immortality and we have AI. That's all I need to know. Oh, and then lastly, this one just popped up. Megan Miranda has a thriller come out like every year. I was waiting to see when this announcement was gonna come. We haven't gotten a cover yet, but it's called The Only Survivors. I haven't read this yet. It says, a thrilling mystery about a group of former classmates, hey, good trope for me, who reunite to mark their 10th year of a tragic accident, only to have one of the survivors disappear, casting fear and suspicion on the original tragedy. I mean, that's the trope I enjoy. You know, like, if we're villains, in my dreams I hold a knife. This is definitely a trendy thing to be writing. And as I enjoy most Megan Miranda's, I think this should be a win. I haven't selected a Megan Miranda as a book club pick it, since like the very first couple months of the book club. And she seems to write a lot more like pure mystery as opposed to thriller or a mix of both. So maybe that would be a good mystery for us to have next year. Anyway, those are all the books that I added to my on my radar or want to read shelf on Goodreads in the last three months. If there's anything you think that I haven't heard about that I need to know about that needs to be on my radar, please let me know. I might have mentioned it in the last couple videos though because there are a lot of 2023 releases that I've already talked about. But as my favorite thing is to learn about upcoming books and talk about them, I hope this gave you something. Hopefully you learned about something you're interested in and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.